Hi guys, doing a review today on the Jackal, the FL10 new premium tank that's been added. This was gifted to me by my friend Cannibal OX, he's also a clan mate of mine. So thank you Cannibal, it means I can do this review and I really appreciate it. Now this tank sits at tier 7, it's a British premium medium tank, it's got full matchmaking, so you're going to see tier 9s in it. It's a dual crew trainer, um, which is worth pointing out. So you can train your French crews in this, as well as your British crews, and that's always nice to have. The tank is a Sherman hull with a French AMX turret and gun, meaning it's an auto loader. Now I'm going to go through some of its upsides and its downsides. I'll do the downsides first, you know, get the bad news out of the way. So first of all, it's made of paper, and I'm bottom tier in this game, so that's never good. But uh, due to the Sherman hull and the fact it's an AMX to it, you're not really going to bounce any damage with this thing. More bad news is the elevation and depression stats on the gun. It's only got minus 6 degrees gun depression, which isn't great. It's the same as the Boilermaker and the Firefly. So it can be a bit temperamental. And the gun elevation stat is only 9 degrees. So you can't point the gun upwards much at all. So if you're facing an enemy and they've got high ground on you, you're going to really struggle, if not find it impossible, to do damage to them. With that in mind, you want to try keeping enemies on level terrain with you. You can be a bit higher than them and things, but not by much, so you do have to be really careful. And I think that's something that you should bear in mind if you're considering buying it. That it can be difficult to play because of that gun elevation stat. The other downside to it is the penetration values aren't great. Because this gun and turret are meant for a light tank, penetration values are a bit low because light tanks can obviously flank and things. So your standard shell has got about 148 millimeters of pen and you've got about 210 on your premium, which isn't very good. Thankfully, the gun does have decent gun handling. Your accuracy rating is about 0.35 base value you got about two second aiming time. Now here I'm going to put some shots into the Tiger. I'm going to ignore the E75 because I can't do anything to him in front. I'm going to maybe track him. Now some of the auto loader stats. You get four shots in your clip. Your base reload time in that is going to be about 11 and a half seconds. I've got vents, brothers in arms and I'm running food. So my reload on the clip is about 10 seconds. Just a little bit over. And the intra-clip reload, the time between firing each shell, is 2 seconds, but it's 1.7 for me with my current So the gun, it fires pretty quick. It's a fun auto-loader to use. The fact it's got decent gun handling is a nice change for me. All the auto-loaders I've used before have been high-tier heavy tank auto-loaders, where the gun handling, you know, is awful. I'm finding this one quite fun. It's a nice change compared to those tanks. Now, this Sherman hull seems pretty nippy. It goes at about 48 kilometers per hour. So it's faster than some of the other Shermans I've played which seem to top out at around 40. So it's easy to relocate around the map and get to positions where you need to be. But you do have to be careful of any enemies spotting you. Now here I'm going to fire some shots at the Oni. I wasn't expecting to penetrate him at this angle. I was just hoping to do things like that. A critical hit and it reset the cap. It just puts him under a bit of pressure, or her, under a bit of um, pressure there. There's a panther here though, so I'm going to try hunting that down next, because I can pen the panther easily enough with my standard shot. I missed my first shot. The shell velocity is about a thousand meters per second, so it's not too bad, but at range you do have to still um, give it a bit of lead. But I fired my four, I'm on my reload now, but it doesn't take it long to reload. So despite this being an auto loader, you do feel like you spend a lot of your time firing. It's really quite fun. It's been a long time since I used a tank like this. I've gone through the Chiri and I've used the tier 6 on the Soviet Czech tree. And they've got auto loaders like these. Um, you know, the low alpha, fast firing kind of ones. And they're good fun. Um, the British tree obviously doesn't have anything like this, so it's nice and unique. Now I'm going to go over here. These two are fairly weak, and I figure I can hopefully take them both out with one clip. 
gun depression, however, means I've got to get right over the hill to actually get some shots. That first person view is awful, sorry about that. Now I want to turn around at this point because we need to put pressure on the cap. However, situations like we're in here are where the tank is going to struggle. We're already at a disadvantage and this uh, tank struggles to carry games. Because it can only do 400 damage per clip, it's only got 1100 HP and the armour is, you know, made of paper. These kind of situations where your team is losing aren't great for it because you just can't carry it. You can try and weaken things, but a lot of the higher tier tanks can two and three shot this, so it doesn't pose much of a threat to them. I was hoping to shoot the back chat, but he's gone. Because the reload time on the clip's pretty good, I've reloaded now, so I'm going to finish off the TD. He's gone, but I did eat a shell from an IS-3. I'm not sure if it was actually meant for me or not, but either way, it did a chunk of damage. Gone over here to see if I can find the Batcher. He's got 700 HP, so this is risky because I can't clip him out and he can very easily clip me. But I'm not going to chase him over the hill. At this point in the game, I was... Well, I was getting a bit worried, basically. I wasn't sure what to shoot at. A farval end isn't great um, for this thing to have to go up against. I'm hoping the medium tank is going to come back around. Now, I've loaded my premium shells just in case at this point. So I'm mid-reload, unfortunately, um, because the bat shot is going to come flying over the hill and crash into me. And there's nothing I can do again. So this one's ended up being a loss, but this was its first game, and it was bottom tier. There was a lot of tier 8s and a lot of tier 9s. And this tank got a very negative reception from what I saw, so I wasn't expecting much from it. And it did close to 3k damage bottom tier, so I was instantly fairly impressed with it. Now, I've played a few more games in it now, and my win rate still isn't very good, because like I say, it does struggle to carry. Once it gets to the point where there's a lot of red tanks, we just hunt this down very easily. But it doesn't stop it being fun. I'm enjoying using the tank, I can, I can see myself using it quite a bit. Mainly just because, like I said, it's something different. The British don't get auto loaders past about tier 4, I think. So it's nice to have an auto loading tank for that uh, tech tree. I'll bring up its stats for you. It's overall, the, the pretty good stats, it's that gun elevation and depression stat that really put it back. As you can see, the gun's decent enough. It's got pretty good view range for the tier. Decent engine. On paper, there's not really much wrong with it there, to be fair. Chiri might have better stats, but again, you know, this is... Now, I'll bring up its gun stats to see you can see them. We'll have a quick look at the armour first, since it's got those tracks on the side. They do count as a bit of space, but overall, this tank's not going to bounce bugger all. If a shell hits you, it's going to pen you. So, you don't want to risk taking a hit from an enemy so that you can dump your clip to them. It's just not worth it. You can't trade in this thing. Now there, we can see the gun elevation stats at 9 degrees and the depression at 6. That 9 degrees can make this really quite tricky to play. Got on a map like Scorpion Pass. Um, you know, when one of them's on that ridge above you, you're not going to be able to get a shot on them. The gun depression, as I said, is the same as the Boilermaker. But if you can play this tank well enough without struggling with the gun depression, then you'll be fine in the Jackal. I am I quite like the Boilermaker because the gun's powerful, but I'm going to be using the Jackal over it to be fair. Just because it's got the auto loader, it's just a lot more fun to play. It's also got a 60% silver bonus, which is nice. But if you're bottom tier, you might end up using some of your premium shell and eating into your profit a bit. Thankfully, the premium shell is a PCR, I believe, and not heat, so that's pretty good. But it's still not one I buy for silver. It's good for your crews, like I say, because you can put your French crews in it. Um, and yeah, because it's unique, pretty much. I'll go through my tier 7 tanks. Right, having a look at these, the only auto loader I've got is the 1357, which is a very, very different playstyle wise, despite also being a light auto loader. So yeah, this is one for tank collectors and for ones who just want something a bit different in their British tanks. But it's not the best, I'll say that much. It's enjoyable, but I'm not sure if it's a very good tank. But either way, I'm going to get a lot of use out. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.